my modular setup has been growing a lot. A while back, I posted a video on my first modular build. I'll put a link up here. I have a whole new case and a bunch of new modules. When I first started getting into modular, I did a lot of research and asked around a lot. Two bits of advice that I got all the time were, number one, get a case bigger than you need, and number two, make sure to plan out everything first. I didn't really listen to those, and it turns out those people were kind of right. So I've already bought a bigger case, and I probably have more modules than I need or modules that don't necessarily work together. Either way, I've learned a lot and now I have a bunch of stuff that I can play with and I want to show it to you. The third bit of advice that I hear from everybody is to think about what you want to accomplish and what your system needs before you just go out and buy random modules. I did a little bit of buying random modules, but I also did a lot of thinking about what it needs. So today I want to show you a couple modules that you can use with the DFAM. These are two that I've been using a lot. They are not the most flashy things in the world, but I think they're kind of essential to building on the DFAM and they address things that aren't on the DFAM. So the first and probably most important module is an attenuator. This one's from Dopefur. There are tons of different types of attenuators out there. You know, there's more complex modules like maths that can be used for an attenuator. There's even simpler ones than this. Like you can buy patch cables with little things like the volume knobs on your earbuds um, that can do some attenuating. This one is pretty cheap. I think it's around like 60 to $80, depending on where you get it. It's passive, so you don't even need a power source for it. So you could theoretically not even have a case and have this module, or maybe make a case out of a cardboard box or something. You don't need a power supply to run it. And it helps so much with the sound studio, and it helps so much, especially with the DFAM. There are some ways you can do some basic attenuating using the mother, but this is really great to have if you only have a DFAM or if you want to leave that for something else. The second module I'm going to show today addresses the fact that there's not really any modulation in the DFAM. So this is an LFO. This is also from Dofer. It's probably more complex than what you need. I bought this with my first modular build because I just wanted a lot of options. This has four different LFOs, each with three different waveforms. So it might be a little bit overkill, but the point is, is having a modulation source like an LFO is something that's missing from the DFAM, and that's something I wanted to add to it. So like I said, these two modules are not the most flashy modules out there. Dofer as a brand, I really like them because they're simple. I really like them because they're built solidly. They're a great company that has a history with Eurorack. But I also like them as a beginner or someone who's just getting into it is that most of their modules and products have one function per module. So something like maths, which has many functions and can be used for all kinds of things and is much more expensive, it can be a little bit off-putting. It's nice sometimes with Dofer to just get a module that does one thing, you buy it for a specific purpose, you can learn from that. You know, with that said, I think in the long run, it might be cheaper to own something like maths, but, but that's up to you. The point is, is that I'm not necessarily advocating for a specific brand but more that the DFAM is missing modulation, so I bought a modulation source. And if you like these ideas, you can go, go out and look at different modules by whatever modulation source you want. There's tons out there. So let's take a look at some creative ways to patch these into things and some things you can do with them. So let's check out how to use these two modules with the DFAM. So realistically, there's literally like thousands of different ways you could use these. But I just want to show you one idea that I used on a recent jam. I'll put the link up in the corner. And this addresses something that I'd wanted to do for so long. But let me play you how this patch is just right now with nothing patched in.
pretty straightforward. Right now, only VCO1's happening. There's a little bit of noise, but it's just pretty straightforward. So as I've mentioned many, many times that a common patch point and one of my favorites is to go from pitch into noise level. And let's hear what that does. All right, so it clearly adds like some sort of percussive hi-hat snare type sound on top of things. But every time I do that, I really like how it rings out, but it just makes it so the bass is so much harder to hear, either that or this becomes too loud. And that's where our attenuator can come in. Because if we go out of our pitch and into our attenuator, and then out of our attenuator, and into the noise level, now we have complete control over how loud or how soft those those hi-hat snare sounds come in no matter what the sequence is or what's going on. I can turn them off. I can them slowly build up. Or just have a nice mix. So these attenuators are just so perfect for getting control over something. Let's hear what it would sound like if we routed the velocity through them. Let's use our LFOs to, to modulate some things. One great modulation source that I always love to do and I brought up before because I use it with the mother is to patch this into the VCF mod. To patch this into the VCF mod and this acts just like the attenuator for this cutoff. So when you turn it up a lot, It has a huge swell, and when you turn it down, it doesn't impact the sound at all. Let's try a few different waveforms, though. So maybe this is like a ramped wave. some nice percussive sounds to it. There are many LFOs too that you can actually sync to a clock. This particular model you can't. But if you were to sync a ramped value like that to a clock, it would have a dramatic impact on the on the rhythm. Let's try a square pulse. I liked the ramp one. Let's use a different LFO into something else. Perhaps the VCA to K. And this one will go at a slightly slower speed. I think that was a little bit too much, so I'm going to plug it through an attenuator.
Let's keep going. We have four LFOs. We might as well patch into something else. Let's do a square wave this time. And maybe we'll go into the FM mount. I just turned up the uh, speed of it a lot. And why stop there? We have one more LFO. Let's patch it into something. Let's do another ramp because those sound cool on percussive things. And this time we'll go into the VCO decay. And we'll do this at yet another speed. So those were all those sounds were made with barely touching anything on the DFAM, but just changing the modulation rates of different patch points. Let's play a little bit with the run stop function. rhythm things running one of these into into the run stop Or even the tempo. 
So there you go. One of the first modules I would buy would be an attenuator, and then I would move on to some modulation sources like LFOs. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe. I'm going to be talking about many more modules that you can use with the whole Moog Sound Studio, and especially the DFAM. The next one I'm going to jump into is using a clock divider to create some interesting things. If you have any ideas of modules that you like to use, please let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear what your setup is. All right, I'll see you next time.